Well, the trailer's going into the water, and I believe my mate is now, where is he? Now coming in, zoom in a bit, with a gaffer. He's heading for it anyway. Let's see how he gets on. Anyway, we'll let, have a little watch later. Oh, it looks like he's going for it. Always an unknown quantity. Not a shouting going on. <laughs> oh dear, I think I'll keep away from this. Good job he's deaf. Meanwhile, my boat is up on a trailer. It's not my trailer. It's borrowed. A bit skew with. But as it's turned out, it's okay. It'll do what I want. As I'm only going to be up here for a couple of times. Quick scrape, paint, bit of maintenance. Below the waterline anyway. Done a little bit of scraping. She's not too bad. Yep, all in all quite pleased. These are the before shots. As you can see, it's a bit skew with, but it's fortuitous actually, because the little tiny uh, stabiliser keels have sat directly over a block of nail to the trailer. So, uh, apart from <laughs> Looking a bit awkward, that's fine. And as soon as she's painted up, she'll go back in. Well, here you can see it was a very tight call. Uh, the boat really wanted to go another three foot further on the trailer. So we're going to have to use uh, jacks and uh, block and tackle and chain to put it on the slipway. But anyway, she's upright, she's balanced. <laughs> a lot of arm waving and swearing, but uh, so far so good. No problems. Well, here we have two days' work. Everything from uh, the deck down are painted. Still got the wheelhouse to do. A little bit of rot in one side, but that's something I can do afloat. So all in all, I think I've done quite well for an old man. Very pleased with it. Uh, while I've been working on mine, my mate is just behind me has pulled his gaffer up and spent an entire day moving it three foot forward on the trailer. Um, he missed the exact uh, the exact point he wanted, but anyway with um, block and tackle and jacks and a lot of careful planning it's now fully on the trailer. So that's all ready to go up into the sheds. The supports that you see are only temporary arrangements before the thing is actually moved, um, we'll get acro props and uh, lash the whole thing down correctly. But uh, it's point of balance now, that's the main thing. We don't need accidents. She's a very deep keeled craft, as you can see, but she sails very well. Ferro cement, gaff rig. One Corvix Sea Worker. This is our underwater profile. Easy maintained. Well, it's really surprising what a, a clean bottom will do. I can now reach my fishing grounds in about half an hour. Well, that's a very nice looking boat. Very nice indeed. boats. 
now heading out to try his luck on this beautiful bank holiday Monday smash in well here I'm looking on eBay for a VHF uh, marine radio just a standard radio I'm not interested in DSC and all the other bells and whistles anything too good is going to get pinched anyway and here there's a a Hudson 660 VHF radio with the old type uh, handset uh, people don't want these anymore they're old uh, they poo poo them you know ridiculous uh, out of hat old hat anything's old can't be any good can it but in actual fact those handsets are, are brilliant because if you're in a noisy environment wind in a cockpit noisy diesel engine you block out a lot of this noise by putting the earpiece to your, to your ear. It has got a built-in speaker. And if you're so uh, anti this type of device, you can always put a conventional uh, microphone, dynamic microphone. They'll work quite happily with that. And I'll show you how you do this. But uh, I bet this doesn't go for very much. It's currently got one bid. And that's me. <laughs> um... And it's plenty good enough for, for what I want. Okay, well, despite what I've said, that uh, you're quite convinced that you want a conventional microphone. It's quite simple to do. I'll demonstrate on this uh, two meter radio. The principle is exactly the same, but it shows the uh, socket well. And there's four pins. And if you use a, a meter, on continuity you'll find that one of these pins one of these four will go to the chassis to ground to earth to screen call it whatever you will if two or more do or appear to go to the lowest one that will be your your earth pin double check you can take the bottom of the case off and just see the wire that actually goes to the the case and then by shorting that pin whichever pin that might be to each of the other three, various things will happen. Well, we've got a TX position, we've got an RX position, we've got audio in, and the common screen which we've found. So we've found one of uh, one of the four. That leaves three. If we if I switch this one on, uh, forget the display running away here. This is a 35-year-old piece of kit that uh, has problems, but works works for me. Okay. Okay, if we go round, and, and in this instance, the earth pin is that one, and it actually goes to this outer ring as well, on this particular radio. But by carefully shorting out each pin individual, like so, you'll come to one where suddenly it will key up, and you'll see we've got output. And we're, we're running into a dummy load, which you always do with any radios. You always make sure you've got an aerial fitted, Otherwise, you'll uh, do some damage. So we've found the TX position. With the squelch open. There you go. Not closed. If you go round with just a screwdriver in your finger, round the other two, one of them will give a buzz. And that'll be your audio in. There's only one wire left, and that goes on the remaining pin. So, wire up your dynamic mic, 600 ohm mod mic, whatever. And you can run these old uh, units that have a headset, handset rather. But personally, I'd rather have the handset. <laughs> but uh, there you go, that's, uh, for what it's worth, that's my opinion. At one time, I decided to offer a service at repairing marine band uh, radios being a ham and so forth and uh, but uh, that didn't last too long I found I was uh, pushing water uphill most of the time I found that 95% of all faults with transceivers were installation mainly poor aerials people just didn't understand impedances dummy loads and so forth 
and uh, I was fighting ignorance all the time. Um, five to ten percent of the problems again was ignorance, people didn't know how to work them. Uh, a lot of the really, really modern ones, this is an oldie, plenty good enough. A lot of the really modern ones are menu driven, have facilities that, uh, quite frankly, I don't know why they put them, well, I do know why they put them in, that's so they can charge you more. But uh, things you'll never use, totally pointless, most people don't understand. Um, modern transceivers nowadays have voice scramblers and all sorts of things. I mean, why the hell would you want to scramble your voice if you're crying for help? But uh, <laughs> it's absolutely crackers. Um, these sort of things don't command a lot of money. Wish I had a pound for every one of these I'd repaired, but uh, generally they, they work okay. And um, good enough for what I want. Um, Always using inline foos, number of radios that used to come to me with no foozes in and the whole thing was probably burnt out. But as I say, the vast majority of cases was aerial problems. Salt water and aerials are an absolute uh, no-no. But um, these are quite a nice little radio in their day. And because you've got dummy load, you can play around and do a few tests and checks. Um, it's quite a big subject actually and perhaps I'll, I'll leave that for another time.